Hi there, long time no see. Today we'll be continuing the groundbreaking tutorial and learn how to make the zoom and get the same look as the preview. Let's start with hiding the background uh, and the edges of our 3D environment. First I'm going to create a solid. You can do this by pressing Ctrl Y or right clicking new solid. I'm going to rename my solid to background to keep things organized. Make sure the background is black and the same size of your composition. Drag the new solid layer under the rest of your layers. Now we will hide the edges of the 3D environment. Click on your element 3D layer, go to render settings, fog and make sure enable fog is checked. Change the opacity to 100%. Now we will start playing with the distance the fog starts on. You can play with the settings yourself and experiment a bit. I will put my fog start distance on 2000 and the fog range on 5000. The fog start will determine when the fog starts depending on the position of the camera in the 3D environment. The fog range will determine the fall off before objects are hidden completely by the fog. Let's start working on the zoom transition. Create a position keyframe on the null at the start of your timeline. You can quickly open the position options by selecting the layer and pressing P on your keyboard. Now navigate to where the rocks stop flying up, which is about 4 seconds for me. Create a second keyframe, but this time, make sure it's zoomed into your scene. You don't want to see the edge, so we're going to stop the zoom just before that comes into the scene. Now, you have a zoom animation, but it's looking pretty stiff, and we don't have that speed up zoom like I have in the preview. Go to the 1 second mark on your timeline, and create another position keyframe. Go a bit further into the scene and zoom in a bit more by hiring the value of the Z position on your null. Now that we added the speed up part, let's work on the smoothness of the transition. Select all your keyframes and press F9 or right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Go into the graph editor and follow my steps if you're not sure how graphs work. We have a tutorial that explains how graphs work. A link will also be in the description down below. Make sure you speed up the part that we want to go faster and make sure you keep the speed going to keep a nice flow. Your graph should look a bit like mine. Now let's add a shake and the optics compensation. Create a new adjustment layer by right clicking, new, adjustment layer. Add a shake and optics compensation to this layer. We're going to disable optics compensation for a bit so we can focus on the shake first. Put the amplitude on zero and the frequency on zero as well. Let's start by making a keyframe for the amplitude and frequency uh, almost at the start of your timeline. Make the second keyframes just before the zoom and change the amplitude to three and the frequency to two. Let's go almost to the end and create a new keyframe for both with the value of 0. Now open up the X shake and the Y shake options and put the X rend amp to 128 and the Y rend amp to 64. Select your shake keyframes and easy ease them by pressing F9 or right click. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. You can easily bring up all your keyframes by selecting the layer and pressing U on your keyboard. Go into the graph editor and follow my steps if you're not sure how these work. If you do know how the graphs work, feel free to experiment.
Let's hide the S shake options and enable optics compensation on the adjustment layer. Put the VOF value on 60 and make sure reverse lens distortion is checked. Make a keyframe for the VOF at the start of your timeline. Go to the second keyframe of the S shake effect and make the VOF value 130. Go to the last keyframe of your zoom and make the VOF value 50. Select all the keyframes and easy ease them and go into the graph editor. Once again, follow my steps if you're not sure how to do the graphs. Once that is out of the way, let's get started on the looks of the scene. Let's make a new adjustment layer and add Deep Glow. If you don't have this plugin, you can use a regular glow and increase the radius by a lot. Put Deep Glow's radius on 700 and make the exposure 0.8. The video may show different settings, but you can still play around with it. Add looks to the same layer and put it above Deep Glow. Click Edit. If you have the default looks installed, you'll have some presets. Apply the frost look under Blockbuster Cool. If you don't have this one, there is a link to this preset in the description. Now let's start on the Element 3D render settings. This is a step that is very heavy for your computer and may increase your rendering time by a lot. Go to the Element 3D layer and open the Render Settings tab. Open up Ambient Occlusion and enable it. Change it from SSAO to Ray Traced. If you're experiencing issues with like flickering with Ray Traced, switch back to SSAO. Put the RTAO multi-sampling to 4 and change the gamma to 4. Change AO fog influence to 55% and the AO illumination influence to 55% as well. Then change the matte intensity to 50%. Now open up the Reflection tab and change the Spherical Map Resolution to 265 and put the Mirror Surface quality to high. Open the Ray Tracer tab and change the Transparency samples to 8. After that, go to the Output tab. We're going to change the Multi Sampling from 8 to 16 and the Super Sampling from 0 to 4. Make sure Enhanced Multi Sampling is checked. Now you've changed all the settings to the highest quality in Element 3D and got some realistic ambient occlusion going on. A download for this project file will also be available in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content. That's it for today, till next time.